Large exaggerated shadows begin to cast themselves over the land. I am left in a cool shade as I continue to chop firewood for the night. Only just visible through the trees do I notice the golden glow of the shimmering sun as it begins to sink into the land. Though the view is nice, I wouldn't be here out of choice. We have more than enough wood to get us through the month of Frostfall. The wood is not my concern right now. My daughter has yet to make her return, and I am growing in uneasiness. I always told her, home an hour before the last light of day, a schedule she's usually good at keeping to, but not today. I would have to be more stern with her the next time she wishes to visit the local market. She's still young, but if she wishes to grow up strong and independent, she should experience the world without me holding her hand. One day soon, her younger brother shall be old enough to join her on the adventures. But those days are yet to come, and so he stays at home with his mother. I wipe the sweat from my forehead and place my axe to one side as the sun sets throughout the province of Valenwood. My concern begins to grow once more. With the market being so close, there was no reason for her to return so late. I turn to head inside and retrieve my lantern, but just as I was about to do so, I see a small silhouette on the outskirts of the woods, created from the now barely visible sunlight. I squint in an attempt to make out the figure on its approach. A couple of blinks later, and sure enough it was Anthea, my beautiful daughter, named after the city where I was raised. We moved out here to be free from the troubles of the larger cities, no corrupt guards or yarls, and best of all, no taxes. Living out here allowed us to become self-sufficient and secluded. Upon seeing her approach, I couldn't help but be reminded of how I was when I was her age. I was also the adventuring type, until I took my lover's hand in marriage. Sure enough, many years later, here we all were. There was myself, my wife, Ellison, and my two children, Anthea and Dexus. I ran to my daughter, giving her a hug instantly upon greeting her. I noticed her clothes seemed a little scruffy around the edges, with dirt covering much of it. I was about to scold her, but I was quickly taken aback once again to when I was her age. I was lucky if I came home with my clothes in one piece half the time. This was unlike her, though. She always seemed to be able to take care of herself, so I decided to let the matter slide, just this once. If she wanted to be a hunter like myself, then it would go a long way in experiencing the world around her with every trip and fall. I took her inside our home, a small cabin, but cosy nonetheless. I stoked the fire as it illuminated the room, giving off a golden glimmer. My two children sat on the bare skin rug as they rubbed their hands over the crackling glow of the fire. Anthea seemed quiet that evening. She had very little to say during dinner, which was unlike her. Normally she liked to talk about her adventures, and all the make-believe quests she had undertaken. I could see that she was tired from the bags under her eyes. I understood why. She had been out all day. That would put even the most adventurous out of shape. I put her to bed straight after. As I tucked her in, she seemed to look into my eyes. Her eyes seemed to speak a thousand words, but I couldn't quite make out what they were. She seemed to be observing me almost as if I'd done something out of place, or strange. She had no emotion on her face, not even a glimpse of a smile, like her usually cheerful self. Still, she was speechless. I asked if anything was wrong, but she just shook her head, in that over-the-top childish manner, and that was the end of it. I don't think much of it after that. I managed to bag some big game while hunting the next day, it wasn't uncommon given our residency in Valenwood. I would often bag more than what was needed and could sell it on for a few septums. Selling anything locally wouldn't pay much, but reaching out towards the other parts of Tamriel could prove to be very prosperous. Valenwood's thick forest and woodland made it the ideal hunting ground. I stayed out for a couple of days in order to maximize my haul. It gave me a chance to be alone and reminisce my adventuring days. As much as I would love to go back to those days, that part of my life is over now. Still, I like to pretend while I'm hunting. Upon making my return that evening, I noticed that the air had a slight chill to it. Mist seemed to have cast itself onto my breath. It was a little early to be getting cold so soon, so I made haste to return. 
The night sky had already lit the way home, from the thousands of stars shining down with a blue aura, creating a cold and yet calm atmosphere. Upon approaching the cabin, I noticed there wasn't the familiar golden warmth in the windows. On a night like tonight, it was the perfect excuse to light a fire. I hurried back, and as I approached the door, I noticed it was open. Just a smidge. Fear had its claws deep within me. Something wasn't right about the whole ordeal. With an uneasy shake in hand, I placed my palm on the door as it creaked open, slowly. I was horrified by what I saw. Blood was strewn all over the floor. It was sticky from where it had begun to set. I held back the urge to add to the mess by vomiting. My head spins all around as I try to piece everything together. I see a very faint light of the dying fire in its usual spot, but knelt in front of it was a small and easily recognisable figure. I raise my hand and call out, but it remains sat there, facing the dying flames. I step closer and onto the bearskin rug as it squelches beneath my feet. I place my hand on the shoulder of Anthea. Her head slowly begins to turn. Her eyes are a bright red that bring light to the horrific sight that is the rest of her face. It was pale and covered in blood around the mouth. Her mouth then begins to open as she lets out a moan of what I can only describe as a moan of death and hatred. Her teeth had been transformed into razor-sharp blades. Bits of flesh had gotten caught between each one. She... It... Smiles with a mouth that stretches back, disappearing around the side of its head. I had read stories about the tale both, but I had never believed them to be the horrors the legends had told them to be. As its mouth got wider, I could do nothing but stare at the creature, who was now laughing uncontrollably with a deep and insane tone. It never broke eye contact while doing so. This thing was never my daughter. She never came home that night. This creature had taken its place in my family. And I had welcomed it with open arms.